Hi, uh, this is Jimmy Tan of Flight Better English with Jimmy Tan. I'm here to share uh, my perspective to Limon Cole's question about a sentence. And I will not say that I have all the answers because I'm still uh, I consider myself a student of the English language but based on what I've learned so far I would like to share my perspective on his questions let's look at the first question I hope you can see clearly is program the true subject and therefore the verb is is correct Let's look at the question, or rather the, the sentence in question. The program aims to equip students with literary skills, where ideas and feelings accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm is delivered to speaking activities my take is that this long sentence can be divided into three clauses that's why i have written uh, the words in this manner for example i will say that the main clause is this one the first clause is the program aims to equip students with literacy skills. A clause is made up of a subject and a verb. So here we have the subject which is the program. The subject. And the verb is aims. to equip students with literary skills. Okay. And let's look at the subordinate clause, which is where ideas and feelings accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm. This is considered a subordinate clause because it begins with, uh, uh, we can consider where having the same meaning as whereby or by which so since begin with the um, we can say is either the conjunction or it can be considered a relative pronoun and then we can consider this as another clause is delivered to speaking activities it is considered a um, subordinate clause because it does not have uh, it cannot it is not complete by itself the subject is missing so the question is what is the real subject or the true subject of this long sentence? Is it program? Therefore, the verb is is correct. Uh, my take is that is does not necessarily uh, agree with this subject because when we look at the whole sentence, I would say that is is actually referring to ideas and feelings. But before I come to that, let's draw a phrase tree for the first clause. Like uh, as we see here, uh, I have to shift the cameras because of the shadow. The program, uh, program is a noun. The is an article or the determiner. So we have a noun phrase as a subject and then we have the verb aims 
to equip students with literary, literacy skills is actually a verb phrase. To infinity equip, this is also another verb. Students is, uh, I will write here, the students is a noun with is a preposition. Literacy skill is a noun phrase. It consists of two nouns. So it's a noun. Literacy is a noun functioning as an adjective because it modifies the word skills. So we have the noun phrase. And then we have the prepositional phrase. And then we have the noun phrase again. Why? Because uh, with literacy skills, if we were to cover it, um, we will read the program aim to equip students. So the question is with what? Then we can add in with this. So to equip So and so is a word phrase. And then we will look at the hierarchy again. Aims to equip. Verb and verb phrase is another verb phrase. That's how we form the clause. Noun phrase and the verb phrase. We have the main clause, or we can consider it as a complete sentence because it forms a complete sentence by itself. The program aims to equip students with literary skills. If you want to, we can add a full stop here. So we have the complete sentence in the first clause, in the main clause. Uh, I would say this is a complete clause um, because. Even if the word, the first three words, the program aims, it has a subject, it's a verb, but it's, the meaning is not complete because aim is an intransitive verb. So we have to find out aims to something. If we stop at the program aims, then people may wonder, okay, aims, aims to what? So that is the reason why we have to continue the sentence by saying, to uh, something to aim to equip students with literacy skills in order to make the meaning of the sentence complete. So we have the first clause um, that shows the phase three. Now we look at the subordinate clause, which is the one in the middle. Okay, so we find that there is no full stop. There is actually a May I suggest a comma because the second clause comes after the first clause. So how is it connected? We see that the word where is a connector. That's why I said that it can be a conjunction that also functions as a relative pronoun. Relative pronouns examples are that, which, where. So it follows the first clause by saying how it answers the question how. For example, somebody uh, asked the question, how does the program aims to equip students with literacy skill? Then you follow it follows by saying by which or where whereby by which. Feelings and sorry, ideas and feelings, comma, accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm, comma. I suggest having a comma here because um, accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm, it is uh, the, the words which are is actually omitted but actually it means that 
ideas and feelings which are accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm. This is considered a, a we can say it's a relative clause, which is optional. Because we can choose not to include it and it can still make sense. For example, if we say ideas and feelings is or are delivered through speaking activities. But if we want to add it in, then we need to have a comma uh, which are accentuated. So this clause actually is an extension or an elaboration of this ideas and feelings. Now let's draw a quiz tree for the second clause. Where is the repetition? Ideas and feelings. So now is a conjunction and then now together they form a noun phrase. Accentuated with the use of distinctive style and rhythm. Uh just as now this is a conjunction is just now. Combine the uh, the noun phrase. Distinctive is the adjective, so we have the adjective phrase of is a preposition, so we have the preposition phrase like of and uh, the adjective phrase. Use the use determiner noun together is a noun phrase. The use of something something so is together is a noun phrase with is preposition so we have the prepositional phrase accentuator is a verb so we have the verb phrase now we come to this noun phrase and verb phrase is actually a clause. And actually, you can consider a sentence if we were to ignore the connector in front. It can be a sentence if we start with ideas and feelings, but um, not really <laughs> because it doesn't really have a proper verb. Um, it actually has a which are uh, which is um, which is omitted. So I take back my word. It's not a sentence, but it's a clause and it's a subordinate clause. Let me write down subordinate clause. As compared to this, this is the main clause. So coming back, coming back to the subordinate clause, uh, we have this preposition. Um, how do we connect it? Preposition plus clause. This is also a clause, but it's a subordinate clause. Now the question is, how do we uh, determine the verb which is the subject that agree with the verb is delivered to speaking activities but before that let's look at the last clause speaking activities um, activities is noun speaking is actually a noun functioning as an adjective because it modifies the noun activity so it's an adjective phrase true is a, uh, it's a preposition so we have the prepositional phrase is delivered it is a passive form of a verb delivers so this is the phrase and then we have the phrase so the question is is this verb referring to the subordinate clause referring to the subject here or is it referring to the subject here my take is that it's actually referring to the subject here because if we read again we see that the ideas and feelings blah 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 is delivered to speaking activities Right. The question is, is correct? Let's look at the close-up of the sentence. Ideas and feelings 
is or are delivered because it's a passive so sometimes we uh, will omit the uh, doer the doer is as to the students the contact shows that the program is equipped to it is aimed to equip students through speaking activities if we change this to active voice we will be the students deliver ideas and feelings through speaking activities but we are now looking at the passive voice so we say ideas and feelings is or are delivered to speaking activities the question is do we use is or are now we look at ideas and feelings is the noun phrase this is a noun phrase is this singular or plural can we say ideas and feelings are singular or can we say ideas and feelings are plural if we consider ideas and feelings as a collective now we may use a uh, we may consider it as a singular now then we will use is but if we consider ideas and feelings as plural because ideas more than one idea feelings more than one idea and then and so it seems that it should be R uh, the verb should agree with the subject the subject appears to be plural but then again it really depends on how the writer treats the subject whether is it a collective noun that is singular or is it a combination of two plural nouns so back to this is delivered is it correct to use the verb is here I will say it depends why it depends on whether the writer treat the subject as a singular noun or a collective noun or whether is it a plural like for example eating and drinking is my hobby I consider eating and drinking as a collective noun so I use the word the verb is eating and drinking is my hobby similarly we can consider this as a collective noun ideas and feelings is although it might sound strange but it depends on how you see it there's no right or wrong it depends on how you explain and justify your answer so i hope that uh, my explanation has been helpful um, i hope it's not too confusing um, then let's look at question two should there be a comma after feelings yes i would suggest a uh, uh, comma after feeling because it will be more clear or it be clearer that this clause following the word feelings is actually a optional relative clause and it's actually preceded by which are accentuated so a comma can be very helpful as a marker to dissect or to demarcate the words more clearly so if there's any question feel free to ask me and this is Jimmy Tan signing off until next time I will see you again thank you for watching bye for now